Welcome to Closet Cases, a show where LGBTQIA people tell their coming out and transitioning stories. Today we have a very, very special guest. You know this man from so many things. He's like all over te television, in the movies, acting with Lady Gaga in A Star Is Born, RuPaul's Drag Race, royalty, Willem <laughs> Belli. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Gay. <laughs> gay, I didn't guess. Super gay. Amazing. So, as you know, the show is about coming out, and I guess we just want to start in the beginning. According to Wikipedia, you were born in Philadelphia. I, I guess was. we'll start there. Yeah. Um, I, I, a, I, saw, I saw this show, and I was a fan of it, and I was like, I need to be on it, because I have the quickest coming out story ever. <laughs> it was basically when your mom catches you sucking dick of your cousin. What? <laughs> yeah. Holy crap. Like, so everybody knew anyway, but like, Sucking on your cousin's dick, that was pretty like, oh, yeah, he's definitely gay. Like, in my baby book, it says that I was either going to be a ballerina or gay because I walk <laughs> on my toes. Like, she, my mother actually wrote those words. Not, like, summing it up, she wrote, he's either gay or going to be a ballerina. What? Yeah, I walked on my toes a lot, and she said, that's an indication. And my dad had a gay brother and a gay sister, so they knew it was a good chance that I could be a little light. Right. So, <laughs> it happened. That, that, I, as a kid, I used to walk on my tiptoes, too, and yeah. my dad used to yell at me for doing it. Yeah, why? I mean, is it like ballerina or lightfoot? Or, I don't know. Yeah, light in the loafers. Yeah, but there was that good little dinosaur, Lilfoot. Remember from Land Before Time? I, I don't think I've watched that movie. Oh, God, I need to watch awesome it. awesome movie, yeah. So, wait, how old were you when you were sucking your cousin off? Oh, God, like seven or eight. What? Yeah, I put anything in my mouth. I still do now. <laughs> like, even if they're like, ooh, it's spicy, I'm like, I'll try. I don't care. Don't so. don't uh, lick the microphone. Yeah, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did that on Drag Race, too. I licked something right when I went into the room. I'm an idiot. Um, but anyway, yeah, I put his dick in my mouth a lot. Wow. But it's not weird anymore. It's not like he can find out about it because he's dead, so it's fine. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, how, I ask how he died? He killed himself. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm so sorry to hear that. It's okay. He was really high, so it was probably fine. He oh. doesn't remember it. Wow. <laughs> and were you in Philadelphia when this mm -hmm. happened? Yeah. Wow. And so what, how did your mom react? What did she say? Um, she, I remember the door shut, so that was fine. Um, I don't think we finished um, <laughs> whatever we could do at eight years old, our little dry loads. Um, <laughs> what else? Uh, there was like a converse, there was a conversation about it because... I remember the conversation, but I more accurately remember the conversation when it happened another time because um, this kid's parents caught me and him together, too, like in like their garage by their deck, like out in the back. Um, wow, so did you have like a couple guys you were hooking up with? Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> I love dick from an early age. Um, and my dad told me about Nambla because I got a gym membership with him. And um, he's like, you have to look out for creeps in the locker room. You know, older men, they prey on boys sometimes. I was like, that sounds awesome. <laughs> I'm like, can you point out these people so I can make sure to avoid them, dad? <laughs> um, but I would literally sit in a locker room at a gym when I was like, 10 and 11, 12, 13, and like read a book. And then the gym management <laughs> told my dad, they're like, uh, your, uh, your son's reading a book in the locker room. And my dad told me and I'm not to do that. And I was like, well, I hate working out, you know, because they tried to make me work out because I was a heavier kid. But that's like kind of my coming out story. And then I never really had to come out after that, like say, hey, I'm gay, everybody. My right. seventh or eighth grade yearbook photo has a, has a rainbow necklace oh, that wow. I'm wearing in it. So I gave zero fucks. Um, yeah. Did you so? Do your mom have a conversation with you to like sit down, or was it just sort of she knew and then she just sort of went on and was I, like, "Oh, it's Tuesday." She was a she was a nurse or is a nurse, and um, I read the book and the band played on, which is all about yeah. HIV in the eighties. And I had a dictionary next to me. I wanted to like know what every word meant and everything. And there were some words and passages I didn't understand in the book. Like there was this part where someone talks about like an amputee rubbing his stump up against someone's butt or that's what it looked like oh. when in reality you couldn't see the guy's arm. He wasn't an amputee. He was fisting somebody. Oy. And when I had to ask my mom what fisting was when I was 10 <laughs> with my cousin, the one who I was blowing and my sister in the car, it was kind of like, I remember it ended with a conversation about why blowjobs from a vampire would be bad <laughs> because that was another question I had. And she's like, you know, blowjobs. And she knew I knew what blowjobs were because I was giving them at that point. <laughs> I just didn't know that like what, you know, for some reason I didn't have the context, but I remember that was a car ride where I learned about fisting and she was like, well, you know, when mommy takes your temperature and she uses a the thermometer in your butt, um, I'm like, 
oh yeah. And the, everybody else in the car was like, ugh. And I was like, tell me more. Tell me more. Are there different size thermometers? <laughs> I want the thick one, please. Mm-hmm. Mm, very yeah. light. Give me that kettle one, uh, that cattle one. <laughs> and then how did your dad react when he found out? Did your mom just have a conversation and did he talk to you about it? My mom told me that when she wrote in my baby book that I was going to be gay, that she said, Cha, Will's gay. And he's like, he's three. You can't tell these things. And she's like, I can tell he's gay. And then <laughs> it probably came to mind that his brother's gay and his sister's gay. And out of five kids, that's 40 percent. You know, so right. I think that he was fine. He's fine with it. He's cool. He took me to Rocky Horror when I was 13. I had the easiest coming out story in the world. There's like no tears, none of that. Um, yeah, so I was really lucky in that sense, I guess. Let's, and then going to high school, did you deal with any bullying from school, from other students or? My sister was a grade ahead of me and she was really popular. So I didn't really deal with much shit. I remember one guy bullied me, but I kind of liked it. He like, I remember, this is disgusting, by the way, it's a trigger warning, but he, this kid was like hitting me, but I was letting him, and then (laughs) he spit a giant loogie on the wall, and he made me lick it up, and I was so turned on, (laughs) I had such a hard on, and that was, it was at Roosevelt, so it was either 7th or 8th grade, but I loved it. Wow. Fuck yeah. There was a trumpet player I was blowing in the marching band, it was in like 10th grade when I was in 8th grade, like I fucking love dicks. That's incredible. Yeah. That's, I mean, also. Still so do. <laughs> big fan. Stands the test of time. Yeah, right. So, so you, uh, going, growing up in Philadelphia, it's probably a little bit more liberal than a lot of other places, I would imagine, right? I lived up north in Philly and Jersey until I was like 10, and then I moved to Florida when I was uh, like 11 to 16, and then I got emancipated and moved back up to Philly. Um, but Florida was great because nobody wore underwear. We had a surf team at our school. <laughs> Everybody was in board shorts, like easy in, easy out. I've yeah, balls are good too. <laughs> they would like hang out the bottom of shorts. I loved going to school in a beach town because like, you know, bodies all over. Right. And then you said you were uh, a little overweight. Uh, mm-hmm. When did you shed the pounds? Uh, I was like 15, I guess, when I started losing weight. And I just stopped eating things that were white. No bread, no rice, no pasta, no no uh, anything white. Except for cock. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was usually darker too. All those Cubans in Florida, I loved it. God, that's the other good thing about Florida. There were all these nature trails, and you could just like go see natural things like dicks, <laughs> 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 like all these boardwalks and stuff. And mangrove. There's things called mangroves, which are like trees that grow like kind of in the water out of islands. And um, if you put a man on a grove, things grow. Oh, yeah, mangroves. That that should be uh, embroidered on a pillow somewhere, <laughs> somewhere for sure. Yeah. So that's my coming out story. I was like, I want to do this show because I it would be the quickest episode ever. Like <laughs> my mom caught me sucking dick. Done. Yeah, but I mean, obviously, there's more layers to it. Right. She, well, uh, emotionally, were you? Did you come to terms with being gay or have any issues growing up, or is it just like you? The minute you sucked a dick, you're like, this is it. I'm gay. Uh, everything's fine. Uh, I don't need to go to therapy. Um, I never, I went to couples counseling once and all my husband and I could agree on was that we hated the couples counselor. Um, (laughs) So I've never really been to therapy, but I do remember having dreams vividly when I was in like first and second and third grade where I would go in this weird Bugs, you know, did you ever see that Bugs Bunny cartoon where, um, or it was, was it? It's the Foghorn Leghorn gets put in a drag. He goes through this machine where, like, this little uh, rockabilly uh, chicken um, puts him in drag, somehow tapes his beak shut, puts him in a dress, gives him a hat with hair, and um, it's this machine that he went through, and then he popped out the other end in drag. I would have this dream where I would go through that machine, get my dick cut off, come out a woman, and then marry new kids on the block or have sex with all of them, except for Danny, who's the one I love now. And then <laughs> magically by morning, my dick would be back. So I knew I... I knew in my head that I didn't think that I was a woman. I just didn't know that men could have sex at that early age together, you know? So my mind was making it so in my head that I got to have sex with men, even though I didn't know that I could at such an early age, which I find fascinating the way the brain works. They're like, oh, well, okay, well, we're going to show you this. (laughs) But maybe it was also telling me that I was a transvestite and I liked the cross-dressing. But either way, I knew I wanted to marry new kids on the block all of them by first grade because I wore their pin in my school photo and then I had to retake the picture because my mom was like, we can't send that, blah, blah, blah. So they retook the picture. 
But um, I knew I loved men. Yeah. I didn't need nobody telling me, well, how do you feel about it? I feel great. <laughs> I feel fucking lovely about it. Yeah. How did you find your drag identity? Um, I had an aunt with one eye named Georgian. <laughs> she was amazing. She punched nun. Um, yeah. She lived in a convent and they were fighting over the remote and she punched a nun, full on punched the nun. So she had to move out of the convent um, because like old indigent, like women in the parish used to live there too. It's like, people paid so she was one of those people she's a little crazy <laughs> um one eye she had brain cancer when she was two and in our family theory was they scraped a little bit of her brain when they got her eye out <laughs> um so me and my sister would just put on all of her costume jewelry from like the 40s to like the 70s she collected she was a hoarder so oh we would see how many necklaces we could put on how many earrings we could pin to our shirts and i loved fucking being sparkly and then um i wasn't allowed to do it anymore after i jumped in the pool with everything on <laughs> just because i wanted to feel uh, i was in a skirt too i wanted to feel like what it would feel like if i was in a pool with like a giant gown on <laughs> so i put on like a couple of her skirts and just floating and fabric but then it gets really heavy so not a good idea if you're listening to this and wanting to jump in a pool in a gown <laughs> very smart mm-hmm. kids yeah. don't do that at home and then when did you start performing in drag um, the first time I was in drag on a stage, I was 13 and it was when I was in a community theater. We were doing Jesus Christ Superstar and I was a little costume assistant and I did that job because I had to do quick changes and get these guys all like from <laughs> one priest robe to like a guard robe and I would full on pants them when I was 13 <laughs> so I could see dicks. I was oh. a terrible child, <laughs> terrible, terrible, terrible. Um, basically sexually assaulting adults. <laughs> I mean, that's what I was doing. If I was pantsing men, uh, I'm so sorry if anybody's listening to this. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's why I was doing that. And then they had like a little rap party and then they rewrote Jesus Christ Superstar, like some songs and parodied them. And then there was one about King Herod, who was a crossdresser in the play. Right. And I talked about him and, um, I was in red corduroys and a black wig and like this froofy little mama rose robe. Like it was terrible. (laughs) I have pictures. I was so, wow. Did that inspire you then to like, did you drag more and get out and and perform in bars and things? Um, I, I couldn't get into bars at that point. That's right. You're 13. But, um, (laughs) I started going to bars when I was 16 because being in drag helped you not get carded kind of, Mm. you know? Because you could just bring any old idea and, oh, yeah, that's me. No, all the makeup, the wig, ex- et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's one of the reasons I started doing more drag, for sure. So and I could drink and party. <laughs> <laughs> and how'd that translate from perform- drag performance into becoming an actor? Oh, uh, basically, people do drag when they want some when they want attention, I think, for some reason. No one does drag to sit at home or sit in the corner unless you're, like, a cross-dresser in Missoula. <laughs> um, so I, in my head, the acting was just a natural extension of the drag because it was just translating to more eyes on me. Right. That makes sense. And I, I, I knew I wanted to be in tabloids growing up. Like, I huh. grew up with my mom getting her hair done. Every weekend at the hair salon, I would read, like, Star and Inquire. And I'm like, I want to be in these. I want to go to these parties. These look fun. <laughs> I would draw, like, little outfits and dresses. People like, oh, you want to be a fashion designer? I was like, no, 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 these are for me. <laughs> how dare you? Um, but it was basically, I wanted to be famous, and I didn't know how, so let's try acting. Let's try whatever. And I got my SAG card on my first job when I was 16 for an oh. MTV show, uh, which never aired, so... From there, it was just like an extension of keep dressing up. People will look at you, and there's more opportunities, and you can get paid more to be an extra in drag than out of drag, and drag just opened a lot of doors for me. And that's when you were emancipated at age 16, Mm -hmm. living in Philadelphia. Yep. So you were just going to the city and doing auditions? Bridge and tunneling back and forth from New York to uh, Philly. I had a warrant out for not paying um, the Lincoln Tunnel like over 30 times. (laughs) They finally caught me in Elizabeth when I was like 17. I was so mad. And then um, after that, I kind of, I didn't get a touring company of rent after like my work session with uh, the director, Michael. And they called me the day before my my 19th birthday and were like, you didn't get it. And I was like, fuck this, I'm moving to LA. And then I moved (laughs) to LA and a couple months later. Oh, so at age 17, you're moving to... I moved to LA when I was 19. 19. Oh, wow. That's incredible. Yeah, I lived a lot, huh? Yeah. Yeah. No, and the emancipation from your from your parents, are you on good terms? Yeah, great. They, oh. I got emancipated because they knew I wanted to be in the entertainment industry, but they knew I couldn't, like, you know, go on set without a parent at that age, and I knew the answer was emancipation, and they helped me. You know, it took one court visit. Uh, we filed the papers. It was easy. 
And then um, I moved into my mom's sister's basement in Philly for like three months, found an apartment on my own by the time I was 17. And that was like 300 bucks a month in South <laughs> Philly. And then did dinner theater, Tony Tina's wedding till I was fired in that. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, moved out to LA. I, st- I hooked for like eight, eight or nine months, about a year on and off, but one one long stint with this the agency and um, made a bunch of money and moved to LA. Wow. Yeah, fun, right? And when did you finally feel like like you've made it? I s- still haven't felt it 100%, but I, in my mind, I know I should after Stars Born because, you know, if I could have told 15-year-old me, like, hey, guess what? You know, Madonna, imagine someone bigger, <laughs> better, and nicer um, is going to be a star in about 20 years and you're going to be in a movie with them and playing, like, you know, a drag queen you're gonna live out all your like dreams um then I kind of feel like oh you know what you've done okay like I feel like everything after this is gravy yeah I've got you know I'm gonna go to the Oscars this month or the parties at least you know I get to do so many fun things that I dreamed about growing up in these like magazines and tabloids like pretty dresses and parties and like you know it's um it's, it's a weird full circle moment when you have to talk about it because then you realize you're also fucking old. Um, and you're like, wow, I'm in my 30s. Wow, I'm doing all this. Um, but yeah, I've always been kind of extra, so I don't really sit down to take time to reflect and think, oh yeah, you've made it. But like, there's always more I want to do. There's always tons more. But I am at a point where I'm um, happy with my um, career and life and I'm not jealous mm-hmm. of other people. So I think that's a good... Um, Indic- indicator? indicator, indicator, yeah, that. <laughs> uh, it's a good indicator that I'm, I've, I'm, I'm comfortable now. So maybe I feel like I've made it a little bit, but I don't know. Yeah, that's incredible. I have a lot of furs. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many furs. I'll show you them after. I love my furs. That's well, yeah, amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Of course, this. Uh, I love your story. Thanks. So easy, but I also like at the end you. I think little Willem would be so proud of where, who are you are Oh today. my God, so happy and all the dicks yes. that I get now. <laughs> he would be thrilled if he could, if he knew that he had a phone that he carried around the whole time with all these dicks on it too. <laughs> his mind would be blown. He would be shitting himself. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And of guys, course, thanks for uh, listening to Closet Cases. Subscribe, follow us on social, follow Willem Belli on social. Do all that. I'm at Willem and then I have a YouTube channel which is horrible. Subscribe. It's amazing. Yeah. And uh, also we have a show coming up on March 11th at the legendary Stonewall at 7 p.m. and uh, check out our website for who's on the show. Nobody Thank- died there. Nobody died. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Willem. Bye. Bye.